Morning, and welcome to Aberdeen First United Methodist Church's Sunday morning worship. We welcome all to come and praise and worship God this Sunday morning. We know that there are many out there who are viewing, and if you are viewing, if you would also comment under the comments so that we know who is worshiping with us, we would appreciate that. Thank you. And we also this morning have a couple celebrations. If we were in the church, we would be having people come up front if they were celebrating a birthday or an anniversary of something. And this gives us a chance to be able to recognize those milestones. This week, um, Bill Hardy has a birthday and he is 75 this week and his granddaughter Ava is also 16 this week and on the 26th Laura Lewis will also have a birthday she will be 72 so we 
congratulate all those for the birthdays and being able to celebrate their special day. worship leaders this morning. Please join us with the call to worship. 
it is easy to stand here in the valley of our comfort. We, we know, know what, what to expect and what is expected, expected of us. But Christ calls us to the mountaintop to receive a new vision. We, we are, are not sure we, we are, are ready for, for that. that. Place your hope and trust in Christ, for He is your guide. Let, Let us open, open our hearts to Christ, ready for the vision He places before us. Amen. Now join us in our first hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Let us in unison say the opening prayer. Lord, it seems so long ago that we heard your words at Jesus' baptism. You reminded us that he is your beloved son with whom you are well pleased. Again today, we hear your words that we are to listen to him, to pay attention. Open our hearts this day, Lord, to hear the words of Jesus, to follow in his footsteps and to serve you. For we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Our children's message this morning is called Mountaintop Experiences. Have you ever had a day that was so special that you wanted it to last forever? Did you know that Jesus' disciples had days like that too? Our Bible lesson today is about one of these days. One day Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him up into a mountain to pray. As Jesus was praying, something very strange happened. The Bible says that the appearance of his face began to change and that his clothing became as bright as a flash of lightning. And then Moses and Elijah, two men who had gone to heaven a long, long time ago, appeared with Jesus. They were talking with Jesus about how he was going to die. And when Peter saw this, he could not believe his eyes. How could Moses and Elijah be here, standing and talking with Jesus? The whole thing was so incredible. Peter told Jesus that he thought that they should stay up there on the mountain and build three tents, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter didn't understand that this wonderful experience on the mountain was not meant to last. It was not a place to stop and set up camp but a starting place for God's greatest gift, the gift of salvation. Following this moment on the mountain, Jesus died on a cross, was buried and rose from the grave so that you and I could have eternal life in heaven. If they had stayed on that mountain, they would have missed out on everything that was still to come. You and I have many wonderful experiences as we follow Jesus. There is a song that says, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. How true that is. When we have a great mountaintop experience like Peter did in today's lesson, we may wish that it would never end. But remember when we follow Jesus and accept him as our Lord and Savior, the best is yet to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the wonderful experiences you allow us to enjoy as we walk each day with Jesus. Help us to follow him wherever he leads us. In Jesus' name, amen.
when it comes that time now for us to be able to intercess for others and to think about our joys and concerns. We would like to thank the Aberdeen Police Department and Aberdeen Fire Department this week for rescuing a person out of our window well this last week. The police found him and the fire department offered their ladder to get him out of the window well. Thank you. And we also have prayers for healing for Zane as he continues to have treatments for uh, eventually receiving a bone marrow transplant. And for Austin, who is in need of surgery, but probably would have difficulty having the surgery. And we need prayers that he may be able to adjust his health and be okay. And we also welcome Bill back home this week. He was able to come home on Friday and he is adjusting and learning to use prosthesis. And we welcome you home, Bill. And we also ask for prayers for the Ukraine and for Russia, that it will be short-lived and safe for all and that we can be back to normal days in the Ukraine and in Russia. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we ask for healing for those bodies that need your healing, whether it be their physical body, their mental body, or their, phys or their spiritual body. For there are many ways for our body to heal and we ask for love and compassion for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, whether it has been recent or whether it has been quite a while. Everybody is different in how they approach grieving and they just learn to love that person in a different way and to love them through their memories. And we also thank you for keeping places for the homeless and houseless to be able to have a warm place when our weather is down into the 20s and 30s. And that there are other outlets when the overnight shelter is no longer after the end of March. For there are people who still need our care and love for the rest of the year as well. And if you're not sure how you can help, you can always contact the Community Action Program. You can also contact churches in the area who work with some of the homeless. But there are ways for all of us to be able to meet the needs in our community when it comes to mission outreach. And as God has taught all of us to pray together, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We would like to thank those who continue to send in their offering during this time, and that we are still able to pay our bills, uh, but hopefully it is getting closer for us to be able to open up the church for all to worship on site as well. And if you wish to send in a um, donation or offering, the address is 100 East 2nd Street, Aberdeen, Washington, 98520. And also um, there is a special UMCOR offering being asked for this week for the Ukraine. If you feel led to donate to that, 
uh, you can mark your check for the Ukraine um, Corps. Today's gospel lesson on this Transfiguration Sunday is the story of the Transfiguration from the Gospel of Luke. This is chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James 
and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel message today is entitled, Sharing Our Experiences. Where are you most likely to get important news and information that you rely on each day? From a print newspaper? From an app on your phone? From social media? From a cable channel? What about from a man or woman standing in the middle of your neighborhood and shouting out the latest headlines? Not too likely, probably. Sometimes God has to wake us up before we can experience God's power. I think that's true for most of us. We need something important to break the cycle of busyness in our lives. We need something transcendent to break the grip of self-centeredness. That's why Jesus spent regular time on his own in prayer. That's why he took Peter, John, and James with him that day he went to the nearby mountain to pray. The disciples needed to be awakened to Jesus' true identity. They needed to see just a glimpse of his majesty so that when questions and doubts nagged at them, when following his lead became difficult for them, they would remember this moment of awakening and they would find hope and courage for the road ahead. Have you ever had an awakening experience? When was a time when God broke through your everyday life and became real to you? Was it a conversation with a friend? A verse from the Bible? A sleepless night? A painful disruption in your life? A moment of pure joy? Or maybe you are still waiting for that experience. Maybe you still aren't sure that you've ever experienced God in a moving and convicting way. That's okay. I'm glad you're here today, and I hope you have an experience in which God speaks to you and strengthens you or becomes real to you in such a way that it changes your life. And that brings us to the second thing we learn from this passage. Prayer prepares us to experience God. Prayer opens our mind to God's presence and God's will for us. Jesus took Peter, John, and James with him up to a mountain to pray. This was Jesus' regular practice, to go away, often up in the mountains, to pray and spend time with God. As he was praying, Peter, John, and James got sleepy. This passage makes me cringe sometimes. Jesus was enjoying the presence of God, and Jesus was aligning his mind and his will with his heavenly Father. Jesus was preparing himself to do the world-changing work of God while his friends were slipping into nap mode. How many opportunities have I missed to hear God's voice or to do the good works of God set in front of me because I was too lazy to pray or I took a nap? There is a question that will make us all squirm. A woman named Barb tells us about an incident that happened in her granddaughter's kindergarten class. A boy in the class just wasn't listening to his teacher, and the teacher got fed up and said, since you don't want to listen, 
You go sit at that table by yourself. A few minutes passed and Barb's granddaughter raised her hand and said, I don't want to listen either. Can I sit with him? The truth hurts. We don't want to listen either, do we? Sometimes to God is not like listening to a friend or a colleague. Listening to God is an act of submission. When we listen to God, we are laying aside our own agenda and priorities and needs and opening ourselves to the mind and the mission that God has charted out for us. The word translated obey in the Old Testament means to hear. In the New Testament, several words describe obedience. One word means to hear or to listen in a state of submission. Another word simply translates obey as to trust. Our obedient response to God's word is a response of trust or faith. To really hear God's word is to obey God's word. It's easy to get stressed out or turned off by the subject of praying. Too many of us have grown up with the belief that there is a right way or a wrong way to pray, but there isn't. We've been taught techniques and rules for praying. Would it change your practice of prayer if you thought of it as simply listening to God with an open heart and mind? A well-known author who had written many books on prayer was giving a seminar and during the question and answer period, a man raised his hand and asked, Doctor, should I pray? And the noted expert on the subject answered, it's very simple, ask God. Instead of judging yourself for your attempts at prayer, just ask God to show you how to pray. It's the simplest way of receiving God's power. A high-ranking police detective spent years working in one of the toughest criminal investigation units in his city. He was exposed to some atrocious crimes and the work began to erode his spirit. Eventually, he had an affair which ended his marriage. And as he said of this time, I used to be 10 feet tall and bulletproof. And now I'm starting to realize that maybe I am not. One night while arresting a serial killer, the police detective experienced an urgent need to reconnect with God. He says, I'll never forget. I just prayed to the Lord. I emptied my heart to him that I needed help. I needed him and he showed up. So in my worst rebellion, when I needed God, I asked for him and he answered me. That prayer and the experience of God's help and presence began the healing process in this police detective's life. Over the next few years, he and his wife reconciled. Eleven years after their divorce, they remarried. Today, they run a bed and breakfast together. They also share the story of their divorce and reconciliation with other couples who are struggling. Isn't that a great description of prayer? I just prayed to the Lord. I emptied my heart to him that I needed help. I needed him. Is that the kind of prayer you would feel comfortable praying? More importantly, is that the kind of prayer God would listen to? Absolutely. So what do you have to lose? The final thing we learn from today's passage is that when you experience God, you are called to share that life-changing experience with others. Tag, you're it. When you experience God, you now carry the life-changing opportunity and responsibility of sharing that experience with others. On that mountain, Peter and John and James saw God's plan for humanity come together. The great lawgiver Moses and the great prophet Elijah pointed the nation of Israel to God. But now in Jesus, God had come in human form to share his truth and salvation with all humanity. And just to seal the deal, God spoke from heaven and said, this is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him, that's important. This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. What did we learn a little earlier about the words used for listening in the Bible? That they, are, they also imply obedience. Once you hear, 
you go and do. So why did Peter, John, and James keep this wondrous experience to themselves? Well, because Jesus told them to keep it to themselves. Why? We don't know. But obviously he had his reasons, and they were simply obeying the Master. A few years ago, the British newspaper The Guardian carried a strange story. A police van had been stolen from an Irish police station, and the police weren't having luck tracking it down. Their investigation was hampered by the fact that the van belonged to their special investigation unit that often engaged in undercover work. Therefore, they couldn't release a description or photo of the van to the public because they didn't want the general public to know what their undercover van looked like. Therefore, they couldn't get the public's help in tracking down the stolen van. Well, in Matthew 17, Jesus tells Peter, John, and James to keep this moment on the mountain a secret until after Jesus has been raised from the dead. Well, guess what, folks? Jesus has been raised from the dead. It's after time, which means it's time to share the truth of who Jesus is with everyone we can. When you have an experience of God, it's your opportunity and responsibility to share that life-changing experience with others so that they can know the truth and the hope and the joy and the peace of God that is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Albert Schweitzer was a pastor, author, university professor, and internationally known concert organist from Germany. One evening, he read an article about the suffering of people living in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa. The author of the article wrote, as I sit here in Africa, it is my prayer that the eyes of someone on whom the eye of God has already fallen will read and be awakened to call to the call and say, here am I. After finishing the article, Albert Schweitzer bowed his head and prayed, my search has ended, I am coming. He applied to medical school and obtained his license. In 1913, he sailed to French Equatorial Africa, where he opened up his first hospital in a converted chicken coop. Over the next four decades, Schweitzer and his wife treated thousands of patients with illnesses such as malaria and leprosy. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1953 for his medical mission in Africa. At his death, he was buried on the grounds of his hospital. We don't get too many mountaintop experiences in life, do we? In my experience, at least, we only get a few moments in life when we see or hear the presence and the glory of God right in front of us. It's a life-changing experience. What are we supposed to do with an experience like that? Keep it to ourselves? No. We are called to take the hope, the joy, the truth of that moment and live it out in the valleys. Share it with our neighbors. Let it deepen our commitment to action and service in the name of Jesus Christ. Your mountaintop experience is your opportunity to share the life-changing power of Jesus with others so they can see the view from the mountain and pass it on to others. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And now may you hear the benediction closing blessing. Mountaintop experiences are wonderful. There is so much to see, but you are called now to go to the valley where there is much to be done. You are not alone. God goes with you, bringing healing, hope, and peace. Go now in God's peace and let it flood through you to others. Amen. Remember who you are and remember to whom you belong.